This is Dr. Richard Fugo. I'm sitting here in Philadelphia in the middle of a snowstorm. So I have some time to show you some truly fascinating cases, killer cases, that can be managed easily and more effectively with the nanotechnologic capability of Fugo plasma ablation. Here you see a white cataract. We do a capsulotomy. You merely trace over the anterior capsule. I'm enlarging it. Now I'm going up under the iris so that I can impale this nucleus, pull it out of the lens bag with the FACO tip, and uh, pull it uh, into the iris plane so that I can manage it and crack it in a very easy fashion. That's what I've done. I've impaled it. Uh, with the FACO tip, pulled it into the iris plane, and with that cannula in my left hand, I was just inserting visco. Now I'm going to crack it. There it goes, crack. And I've broken it into two parts. Remember the um, posterior capsules push back with that visco that was uh, infused, and uh, the iris um, uh, plane is being respected as I break apart the nucleus. Here you can see that there is a beautiful centration of the um, IOL. Uh, here you can see that after three or four weeks there's that haze of the anterior capsule rim that almost uh, just about comes up to the uh, peripheral edge of the optic. Now remember we uh, had made this real large capsulotomy, two millimeters from the limbus, yet there's such a high convexity peripherally um, of the lens that you still get a beautiful area and get great centration. Here's the next killer case. This is a lady, a black, beautiful black lady come in, uh, hand movement vision with Saltzman nodular degeneration. Look at those uh, Saltzman granules on the cornea with the peripheral panis. I'm going to use the same plan of attack. I'm uh, ablating. I'm going to make a large capsulotomy so that I can bring this up into the iris plane because quite frankly uh, you had extremely poor stereopsis and poor visualization because of all of the activity on the cornea, as you can see there. Uh, we're up under the iris. Again, I'm going out uh, to about two millimeters from the limbus. Remember that uh, when I did that in that first case, and you still had a nice rim. Here I'm uh, injecting visco uh, to push the posterior capsule back and let the nucleus sit in the iris plane as I crack right there, the, the nucleus, and I do this with using very low phaco power, um, crack it apart, and here you can see the great fixation. Yeah, you have a large capsule eye, but look at the spring in this um, IOL. Uh, I had told the lady that uh, she would probably need a PK, sent her to a cornea specialist. As a matter of fact, I put that little suture down there at 6 o'clock, Look, though, just around the center, there is a nice clear area, and she ended up with 2050 vision, believe it or not. Here, my cannula right there um, accidentally put a perforation through that anterior capsule, so I have a tear. So I'm going to go up under the iris as far out as I can and get an ablation path in front of the tear in capsule. and if you get an ablation in front of capsule, you will then stop a tear in capsule. And that's what I just did. I put an ablation path out and went a little further. And now I, I have an ablation path that's uh, sitting in front of the tearing head. Now I'm going to continue on. I'm comfortable at this point because if you ablate in front of a tear in capsule, you have effectively stop the tear in capsule because your tear will tear into the uh, fugo blade ablation path. And again, I proceed ahead with this uh, tear patient the same way that I did in the prior two cases. Here is my uh, black female who came back. She was ecstatic 
with the results of her first right eye. She's the Saltzman nodular patient, and uh, we go into the left eye, and my scrub nurse was yelling that she couldn't see, and I w was saying back to her that I can't see either. So you don't have to have great visualization with the Fugo blade. That's one of the ad advantages. Uh, so I impaled it, pulled it up um, into the iris plane. Here I'm going to fake a flip. I feel very comfortable here. I fake a flip the nucleus. I'm going to crack it. And um, again, uh, in this eye, she ended up with about a 20, a sloppy 2080 vision. And this woman was extremely happy. Here's a patient, um, just a standard capsulotomy, nothing heroic about this. And I'm just walking along. You just gently walk along uh, the uh, pupillary margin. And look at the spring. Even though you have this large capsulotomy, you have fantastic spring because there's good placement. I explained that in the first video. Uh, here we have a floppy iris syndrome patient. Uh, you don't have to use retraction of the pupil devices or anything like that. You just put a little visco under the iris and make a large capsulotomy. I uh, put visco behind the nucleus and now I'm cracking it and uh, it makes that procedure pretty straightforward and pretty friendly to do. Here right now we have um, another white cataract and I'm making a large capsulotomy. Listen, this is a terrific device. I use it in every case. Here I make a small capsulotomy. Now I'm going to just walk around, just spiral around and make you a beautiful, uh, quick, easy and perfect moderate size capsulotomy. Look, this puts you in complete control. Now I'm saying, I want a bigger capsulotomy. All right, fine. I'm just spiraling around the original capsulotomy. Isn't this a wonderful capability?